This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Therapy has helped me through some tough times, believe me. I thought it was all internal. I thought it was all about my inner struggle. What I didn't realize is that my inner struggle was affecting others, and I didn't understand that until I talked with a therapist. Some of us go through tough emotional moments in our lives, and we feel all alone as we try to process what's happening. Many years ago, I suffered through several concussions while doing sports-related activities. I had a skiing accident where I suffered head trauma, and before that, a couple of what I thought were minor incidents playing beer league hockey. Sure, the medical doctors explained what was happening to me, but the psychological part of my life was in shambles. I finally decided that I needed help as my friends and family began to tell me that, well, I wasn't the same old Dave that they loved. If those internal struggles are affecting you, they're probably affecting those around you. Maybe it's time to start thinking about therapy. You could give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, which makes it flexible to work around your schedule. You could become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Just visit betterhelp.com slash fullhouse today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash fullhouse. Okay, I admit it. When I'm busy, I do not enjoy going to the grocery store. I would rather have my food ready to go. But how do you get that without jumping on the fast food train? Well, let's face it. That fast food train is not good for your caboose. <laughs> Factor is like a bullet train. I can skip the grocery store, the prep work, and time in the kitchen making everything. Factor's ready-to-eat meals get delivered right to my door. And I've got 35 meals to choose from every week. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Factor is pretty darn flexible. Head over to factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 and use code fullhouse50 to get 50% off. That's code fullhouse50 at factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Trust me, it'll be good for your caboose. Welcome to episode nine of Full House Rewind, also known as the miracle of Thanksgiving. Hi, I'm your host, Dave Coulier. Rich Carell is our guest on the show today, and he'll be joining us shortly. Well, in this episode, it's Thanksgiving. The show opens with Danny trying to get Michelle to say the word turkey. Danny wakes up Jesse and Joey and announces that his mom won't be able to join them and make Thanksgiving dinner because she's snowed in in Tacoma. Joey tells the guys they'll be able to put together a feast and it'll be the <laughs> miracle of Thanksgiving. Danny says that everyone has to be perfect because it's the first Thanksgiving that the girls are spending without their mom, Pam. Jesse, Joey, and Danny get ready to cook Thanksgiving dinner when the girls enter. Danny tells them that grandma is snowed in and can't make it. Well, DJ and Stephanie tell the guys that they can help with the turkey and mom's picture-perfect pumpkin pie. The family starts cooking dinner with a little song and dance number to the Temptations, get ready. Well, that's when the guys realize that DJ's turkey is frozen. So Danny puts the turkey into the oven and cranks it up to high heat. Just then the doorbell rings and two women realize they're at the wrong address, but they happen to have a turkey with them. The guys try to buy the turkey from the two ladies. Well, then we cut to the kitchen where Joey gets a bottle stuck on his tongue. Just then, he notices that the oven is smoking and goes to the living room to alert Jesse and Danny. Then the guys go to the kitchen and realize that the turkey is burnt to a crisp. Just then, the girls enter and discover that the turkey is ruined. To make things worse, Stephanie drops mom's picture-perfect pumpkin pie on the floor. Danny and Jesse then go upstairs to talk with the girls. And Jesse looks through his scrapbook, and he and Danny talk about how much they love and miss Pam. The family sits at the kitchen table and talks about what they're thankful for. They carve the burnt turkey, and we have a <laughs> miracle of Thanksgiving. 
We'd like to hear what you think about episode nine. Send us an email at fullhouserewind at podco.us. And with that, let's get on with the show. You know what? You're going to love our special guest, Rich Carell. I first met Rich before Full House had ever aired on television. It was, to say the least, it was a very exciting time. The entire cast flew to San Francisco where Rich Carell would direct us, shooting our opening titles for the show. And I brought my Detroit Red Wings jersey to wear for the shoot, hoping that no one would tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, you can't wear that on the show. I knew that if I wore my Wings jersey for this shoot, it would run on every episode in the opening credits. You see, being a kid born and raised in Detroit, it was my way of representing my hometown NHL hockey team. Whenever you say the words full house, a nostalgic visual picture comes to mind for those who watch the show on ABC, syndication, and now streaming everywhere. For me, and kids of my generation, there are shows that also bring back nostalgic visuals and memories of a simpler time, when there were only three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Shows like The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, Bonanza, Lassie, and Leave it to Beaver. Well, Rich Carell was a child actor on those shows. He's also the son of Charles Carell, who played Andy in the hugely successful radio series, Amos and Andy. A much different time in our nation's history, the show aired from 1928 to 1960, the longest running radio show in history. Rich Carell was the driving force behind Hannah Montana, creating the show that launched the career of Miley Cyrus. Rich would also direct 22 episodes of Hannah Montana. He's also directed Perfect Strangers, Step by Step, Family Matters, Two of a Kind, starring Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, The Amanda Show, That's So Raven, and Rich would also reconnect with the Full House cast, directing 33 episodes of Fuller House. He's such a talented, great guy, and I'm so happy he can join us on the show today. Here's what Rich Carell looked like when Full House was on the air. Please welcome to Full House Rewind, Rich Carell. Hey. Hi, Rich. Hey, big guy. Hey, what's happening, big guy? That's a, I used to do that impression of you on the set all the time. I know. I was, you're, you're, it's, you're the only guy that would like do an impression of me. Right, right. Like We did everybody hey, big else. Guy. But, yeah. Hey, big guy. Boris Karloff was my uh, friend. <laughs> I was friends with the monster. Didn't Boris Karloff like take you to the Santa Monica Pier and stuff? Like he was your buddy, right? Well, he can't. He was introduced to me when I was ten, right? And of course, I was a big monster fan anyway, watching right. all those little movies, and I freaked out when I met him. Yeah, I got to know him pretty well. And then when we were doing Leave It to Beaver, I don't want to get ahead of myself, right? We would go and visit him. <laughs> he was doing a show called Thriller. Yeah, this is a long time ago. Well, but, yeah, but it's so interesting. This is. You grew up in Hollywood royalty as a kid. So, I mean, these people were in your life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who were some of the famous people that were in your life back then? Well, all you had to do was name the people in the neighborhood. We lived in this very large home. <clears throat> it was three and a half acres. And around it were all these bordering neighbors. And so it was Alan Ladd, uh-huh. Lana Turner, and she was married to Lex Barker, who played Tarzan. And so, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, our back, <laughs> our property backed up to her pool house. Yeah. So she would come down like in a bathing suit. And she was kind of a babe, but I couldn't care less. <laughs> I wanted to see Tarzan. You know, I was a little kid. Hey, where's Tarzan? So then, so then next to Lana Turner and Lex Barker was Judy Garland. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time with her. That was Mrs. Luft. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was married to Sid Luft. Ah. We could never, our parents made us be very respectful, so we could never go, hey, Judy, or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I always called her Mrs. Luft. There was a time when I went over there once, like on a Sunday afternoon, I think I was playing football with her son or something. And we were in the kitchen, she was making soup. And I said, hey, uh, Mrs. Luft, I saw your movie last night, you know, The, what, the Wizard of Oz. And she, oh, <laughs> she said, that's great, honey. And I said, you know that song you sing, get, you, will you like sing that for me? And so she <laughs> sang like the first stanza of Over the Rainbow while I was like eating cookies and she was making soup in her kitchen. See, I would have uh, been leaning over the fence going, if I were a king, put him up, put him up. Yeah, yeah, I was a little too young to do that. I wanted to know about Margaret Hamilton who played the witch. Oh yeah. And she said she was the greatest. A nice lady. Not only that, she was only 36 years old when she made it. Isn't that that crazy? Because you think of her as being this old crappy lady. Yeah, 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 an old hag and it didn't work like that. 36 years old. 
All right, I, w- I want to start at the beginning. Okay, well, well next to Judy was Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Oh, okay, yeah, this is still and your then, neighborhood. And then next to her was Jerry, well, to them was Jerry Lewis. Then we had Gloria Graham, Sammy wow. Kahn, the songwriter, wow. Carol Burnett, and this is the best one, Walt Disney. Walt, I spent a lot of time with Walt Disney. Really? When he, when he cut the ribbon at Disneyland, my sister and brother and I were about 10 feet away from him. He That's had, crazy. Yeah, he had invited us to go to the opening of Disneyland. So we spent a lot of time with him. Right in around his house, he had a miniature steam train at his house called the Carrollwood Express. And I used <laughs> I there's love pictures it. of me going, hi, you know, right? But that was so, I was so lucky. That was really cool. Oh, man. Yeah. The life you've led, man. Just the, the Really stuff, lucky. The, you know? Yeah, the stuff you've seen. Now, and we came together in the Miller Boyat family. Mm hmm. But you'd been doing stuff with, with Tom and Bob before that, or, or were you? Um, I, I arrived kind of in that family when I started working for Gary Marshall, and that was 1977. Right. And so originally I was a music coordinator to come on to do some of the, put some of the music together for Gary's shows, and then about six months, uh, Ronnie Hallen, who was Gary's sister, not Penny, Ronnie, right, right. Yeah, came, I remember to, me Ronnie. Said, came yeah. to me and said, Rich, we want you, you have this background in film and you know, you've done editing and music. We want you to work on the show. And associate producer, I thought this is going to be great. Associate producer, what's the show? And she said, Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley was the number two show in the country. Wow. So not because of me. I just <laughs> happened to be in the right place at the right time. Right, right, right. So I started working for, for Gary, and I was associate producing Laverne and Shirley first and then Happy Days. And then I was like line producer on Happy Days. And then Fred Fox and I wrote a number of the episodes but what's interesting is while I was on Laverne and Shirley as the associate producer, Jeff Franklin came on as one of the staff writers. Uh, and, that, and this was 1978. Wow. So this was long before Full House. Nine I mean, years before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I got to know Jeff really well. It's super nice guy. He was always really fun. He was very funny. He was really nice to me. We got along great. You know, I'm a little older than he was, but we kind of like same guys, you know. And so... When it got time to do Full House, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but when it did, Jeff asked me, and it was great, he asked me if I could come on do the pilot. Right. As the producer. As a producer, right? Yeah, yeah. Joel Zwick was the director. Right. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Therapy has helped me through some tough times, believe me. I thought it was all internal. I thought it was all about my inner struggle. What I didn't realize is that my inner struggle was affecting others, and I didn't understand that until I talked with a therapist. Some of us go through tough emotional moments in our lives, and we feel all alone as we try to process what's happening. Many years ago, I suffered through several concussions while doing sports-related activities. I had a skiing accident where I suffered head trauma, and before that, a couple of what I thought were minor incidents playing beer league hockey. Sure, the medical doctors explained what was happening to me, but the psychological part of my life was in shambles. I finally decided that I needed help as my friends and family began to tell me that, well, I wasn't the same old Dave that they loved. What a wake-up call. If those internal struggles are affecting you, they're probably affecting those around you. Maybe it's time to start thinking about therapy. You could give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, which makes it flexible to work around your schedule. You could become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash Full House today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Full House. You could become your own soulmate. Yeah, I told Jeff, Jeff Franklin was here, and I told Jeff the story on the pilot when, when Joel got into my face, and he ran down from the booth, and he's like, I can't believe it, I asked for actors, and I get stand-up comics, you and Saget couldn't act your way out of a paper bag, and he just was going at me, and, he, and everybody's kind of stopped, like, this is Joel Zwick, right? And he's yelling at me, and, and he's sitting there, and he's just bullseye red, right? And I just looked at him, and I said, what are you saying? <laughs> and it just broke him. And I knew if I broke this guy, he wouldn't be on then my Then he'll tail. love you. And then he loved me. And he always did, too. Yeah. we had Once good... you won him over, man, he was on your oh, side. Oh, he was totally on your yeah, side. Good, he's a good director. Yeah, he was a great... He was a great... You always liked those impressions that I did. I would do Tom Miller and Bob Boyette. You were always my best audience. And That's people, the thing I remember could... about... You know what? The thing that I remember the most about Full House and directing Full House was that I spent time laying 
across the director's podium laughing at you and Bob Saget. Because when you two guys got together, it was like, okay, we're going to rehearse the scene. And then you guys would go off onto these tangents. But instead of a director that goes, come on, come on, I enjoyed it. You and Patty were my two best laughers. Oh, my God. And I would come up to you and I would do my Bob, Bob, uh, boy, I want to hear, hear some of this. Rich gets it. I mean, <laughs> that's Tom Miller. That's Tom Miller. Tom Miller, and he would always do this thing with his hands. He's like, you know what? Rich is making a movie. He gets it. He gets it. I mean, when we found Candace, I mean, we knew. <laughs> yeah. And then Bob was like this, okay, everyone. What we want everyone to understand in the cast is that this is a family show. That's what he said to us first season. Oh, yeah. Because it was three guys raising three little girls, and then we kind of, you know, had to find an operating system. And Bob and Tom and Jeff pulled a, the whole cast into a room and said, um, it's a family show. And um, that's what we've decided. Yeah, and, and, they, so, and they, you know, if those guys loved you, it was oh. like... The they best. treated they were us so loyal. They treated us like gold. They were so generous. I mean, the it best, was, yeah. it, they were really, they were like our fathers, you know, it was like this guiding kind And you of know, the fatherly. funny thing is, the funny thing is too, Dave, that when I did the pilot with you guys, I produced the pilot. Yeah. So I was always on stage. I was interested in the post. I was actually, you know, doing the nuts and bolts and the union stuff and all that. And then Tom said, oh, Rich, you go up and make, go make the titles because it'll be a movie. And we you know, went to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But the thing that I remember the I most. I wore my Red Wings jersey. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. You had that on during the pilot. Yeah. Um, the thing I remember the most because I went back. Jeff said to me, stay on the show as the producer and we'll give you directing slots and all this stuff. Right. And I went, okay, so let me, let me see. And I went to Tom and I said, you know, I love Jeff. I don't know you guys really well, but I had a great time on the pilot. And he said, you know, they need you on the Hogan family or there's going to be a mutiny. And I thought, <laughs> okay, so I was directing Hogan family and perfect strangers. Yeah. And so I didn't spend a lot of time directing full house, but when I think of full house, it was always part of like my family. Yeah. I was always there. I was always seeing you guys. Oh, we always. would do stuff together. We'd socialize together. It was really a cool group of people that if you made friends with them and you worked with them, you were just, Part of that family. Part of the family. It, re yeah. it really was. Yeah. I mean, even when Fuller House started and I showed up there, it was like I'd never left Full House. Yeah. And it was so great. Well, Karen and Miller. I appreciated that. You And you were part of that. Yeah. And, and you were a, a huge and still are a huge part of our family all the way through Fuller House. You know, Karen Miller was a guest uh, on an earlier oh, show. Great. And she sends her love. She goes, Oh, I just love Rich. You know, and it's oh, like she everybody was, loves Rich. She was you great. Know? She was and great. I created that character, Gilbert. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ricky, you, you, ever just, you ever just go up to like a, a cow and just bite into it because you're hungry? <laughs> or drink like a whole cup of cream? Like just because you're thirsty. And you're okay, thinking, so, the, so you guys watching the podcast should know that I would go, all right, we're going to do B scene, everybody. Dave, you're going to start on action and action. And then suddenly Gilbert would show hey, up. Ricky, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I've decided I'm going to change my character. So I this is like why it. I was always <laughs> laying across the podium laughing. I told you that. We had such a great time. Go, we always did. got the work done. We, we did. But we had a great time. But we doing laughed it. our way through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. that, you know, it was it was tough sometimes, because especially when we had when Mary Kate and Ashley were little, mm -hmm. uh, took a lot of patience, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got kid times on stage. They could only be out there for so long. And it was like, bring the baby out. Which one? Okay, Mary Kate's, you know, in a good mood. Bring her out, you know. And then they'd cry and get fussy. So it was it was tedious. Well, the most famous scene in the pilot was you and John changing her diaper, the diaper in the kitchen. Yeah. But the thing is, in real life, the baby was, you know, she was afraid of water. And oh, yeah. She was screaming oh. bloody murder. We had to keep her back to the camera. Like, yes. You guys had to go in and loop everything. Yeah. Repl and, you know, the dialogue replacement. Yeah. yeah but I mean, I a lot of people that. don't know that. I looked at that scene not too long ago, and it's still really good. It's like a classic TV sitcom. That, yeah, that kind of sold the series. You yeah. Know, that kind of sold ABC. That that uh, And Jody going on the... Uh, uh, the, the, drapes, the curtain rod. The curtain rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another funny psych. See, now, Jody, the first thing that Jody did with Miller Boyette was the Hogan family. Right. <clears throat> and she came in, and I think she was just four years old or four. something. Four. And she was like Shirley Temple. I'm not yep. kidding. Oh, I know. She had her dialogue down. You could give her these subtle little things like, um, you know, be more pensive. And then I think, what the hell did I just tell a little kid? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I got it. Right. I got it. 
Jody. She was so great. She yeah. was one of the only characters that got onto that show without an audition because you know they didn't need to audition her because yeah. Miller Boyette loved her. Oh, she yeah. used this yeah. kid. You know why? Because <clears throat> she gets. She it. gets. It. She gets it. She does. Um, I still keep in touch with all the Full House people. And uh, are there actors from other shows that you keep in touch with? Like even from some of your old shows, you were telling me uh, that you just. Uh, I just had John Provost at my house last weekend. Dennis the Menace. No, that's no, Timmy that, from Timmy, uh, Timmy and Lassie. Timmy from Lassie. Timmy from um, Lassie. Great guy. Uh, very nice guy. When I worked with him, it's back in, you know, 1960, 61. Yeah. Doing the Lassie show. And, you know, he was a huge TV star at the time. Yeah. And he could have been kind of a snobby kid. He wasn't. He was a great kid. Was liked that? other people. And then, of course, Jerry Mathers. He's one of my best friends. He's been one of, one of my best friends for years. And um, I was best man at his wedding. And, Wow. Oh, and by the way, I was at his birthday party a week ago. So we stay in touch. We're, I think I'm like two and a half weeks older than him, but he's, uh, he's still my bud. And uh, wow. I was really close to Tony and Ken Osmond, who played Eddie. <clears throat> All of us stayed together. We stayed in contact. Yeah, we did. Okay. I admit it. When I'm busy, I do not enjoy going to the grocery store. I would rather have my food ready to go. But... How do you get that without jumping on the fast food train? Well, let's face it, that fast food train is not good for your caboose. <laughs> Factor is like a bullet train. I can skip the grocery store, the prep work, and time in the kitchen making everything. Factor's ready-to-eat meals get delivered right to my door. And I've got 35 meals to choose from every week. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Factor is pretty darn flexible. I can change my order every week. Let's say I want cold pressed juices or smoothies. Factor. Let's say I want protein plus or keto. Factor. Energy bites, energy sides. Factor. <laughs> so how do you do it? Head over to factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 and use code fullhouse50 to get 50% off. That's code fullhouse50 at factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Trust me, it'll be good for your caboose. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's a, you know, because there's some shows that you either bond with people or some shows you do it and everybody goes off their different direction and you never talk to those people ever again. Right. Which is a marvel with Full House because we all still get together. I was just with the girls at uh, 90s Con in Hartford. Oh, that's so and cool. And everything clicks back in. It's like you and I, when we get together, I can just do a voice or something. It clicks right back in. It's like no time has passed. Absolutely. I you love know? stuff like that. But I, again... You and Bob Saget, I, I can remember how funny you guys were on stage. And this was not scripted stuff. This was just the stuff that you yeah, guys we were would, bringing to the stage. We would go Really off. funny. <laughs> we really would, funny. We would go off. Yeah. Working on that show was so much fun. It was the kind of thing where you would like get up in the morning and go, oh, I'm going to go do Full House. This is like really cool. And we became the set where other actors on the lot, especially at Warner Brothers with like um, Family Matters when they were over there, we were the set would, where people would come and hang out from other yeah, shows yeah. because it was fun because me and Bob would be goofing around and me and John would be goofing around and you'd be there. And it was just, it was just, we laughed our way through every week and it just made the whole work process just a joy. Yeah. John and I always got along great because we were both rockers. He's a better one than I am, but I'm kind of a sandlot rocker. I play guitar. He yeah. plays guitar. I play drums. Yeah. You played at a couple drums. of our rap parties, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. I remember that. And John played at a couple of bands. And it's like he played at the Hogan family rap party, a drummer in the band. John was telling an interesting story where um, John Fogarty played at one of our rap parties. What? Yeah, Fogarty came and played. Was this before he was a name? Uh, no, no. He just, uh, I forget what the story is. You're going to have to watch the episodes now, Rich. But, I, you know, I was talking to John about some of the people like, are you ever on stage just pinching yourself going, I'm on stage right now with the Beach Boys? And he was like, yeah, all the time. You yeah, know? that's, Which that's is crazy. what a great gig that is. Which is crazy, you know. Yeah, that I he, love that music. Oh, it's, it's the Beach Boys. That stuff. Pet Sounds album yeah. is pretty, I mean, I can listen to it over and over and over again. And it's that Brian Wilson wall of sound that he created, just where everything's shifting back and forth and well, phasing. Well, I'm a bit older crazy, than you. <clears throat> crazy. Get out. But the thing is, the Beach Boys, that's what I grew up with. Yeah. Beatles, Beach Boys. Southern um, California. Yeah. It was the Southern California yeah. surf set. Jan and Dean. Oh, yeah. That came out of here. Uh, Dick Dale. 
All of those guys. You know, all yeah. of those guys. That was such a that's that's great, really cool. But that, that music means a lot to me. So you've directed so many, so many shows over the years, like iconic sitcoms and shows and stuff. Do you ever do you ever watch your shows? Um because I don't. I, I never watch. This is a whole new journey for me because I never watched. Well, I don't hours. go out of my way not to watch them. Right. But it usually doesn't come up. I'm a huge movie fan. Yeah, and I, I always have been. I know you are. Especially the old movies. Yeah. But I always end up watching more movies than TV shows. And, and um, I've just been really lucky. I mean, 719 episodes as a director. It's crazy. And then I was like, I produced for seven years before that. So my episode... Episodic count is up around 1,300. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy, but I had so much fun. Yeah. And But no, to answer your question, I don't go out of my way not to watch them, but I don't. it just doesn't come around. I'm usually watching movies and things. I'm we ready. really were in like this golden sitcom era. Oh, man. Era, you know, I don't know if people realize. Sitcoms were king back then. They were, the, they were king, and the people we worked with were not only really nice and loyal, but they were so appreciative. Yeah. You know, if you did great work for them, they would promote you and take care of you and put you on the next shows and yeah. all that. That was really a good time to be around. Yeah. That was super, super nice. I think it's rare. The, the careers that both you and I have had, you know, years later, but mine, you know, right in the heart of mine, uh, it, it, it was really special. And I have so many special people in my life from those times that are going to be my friends the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. You know, it's pretty, pretty unique, you know, and Full House is a big driving Part of but that, we also you know? worked when you when you worked for Gary Marshall. I mean, he called his production company on the Paramount lot. He called it Camp Marshall Mount. Yeah, this is the kind of guy he was. Yeah, I found that Tom and Bob are like that. I mean, you know, in my career, when I was working all the time, you could get any agent. You know, I was with every agency you can think of. But my real agent was Bob Boyette. Yeah, because he was such a loyal, good guy. Yeah. And I mean, that's incredibly important to me. But it's also rare in the business. Yeah. And so we were part of that whole thing. And I think, and by the way, too, Dave, what was lucky about all of us was I think we really appreciated at the time. Yeah. It wasn't something that we went, ah, oh, gosh, you know, back in the, in the late 80s when we were doing full house, I should have thought this and I should have done that. No, we were doing it. Well, and I appreciated it at the time because I thought this is so special. This is never going to happen again. Right. And I just knew that. I felt that. I yeah. went on to other shows you know, on ABC and, and other hosted other shows and things. But I just thought it will never be this kind of an atmosphere. It's where, like the glory days. Yeah. It was our glory days. It and is. we were young guys, so we could enjoy it all. Yeah. That was, but you're 100% right. I mean, all of us appreciate it. Yeah. That's why I think we all stayed close. You know, we, did, we also did Fuller House together. Mm. And you directed a ton of those episodes. Like, I think like 35 of them. Yeah, you directed. Like half of them. Yeah, like there were 72 of them. And... and um, I, I want to thank you because I was a first time director during Fuller House and uh, you gave me so much support, especially with cameras. I mean, getting the shots right and, you know, marking my script with technical notes. You, you taught me how to do that because I had no idea. I really didn't. And, you know, you actually gave me one of your scripts with your notes on it. And I went home and I studied your script. And it was like an encyclopedia. It was, you are so meticulous technically. And I just, I, I'm, I'm dying to ask you, where did that come from? All that technical knowledge? Because that's not something you just pick up. It takes years oh, to yeah. get to that advanced stage where you're working with four cameras on a sitcom. You have to know where your actors are going, where your cameras are cutting. You have to know, you know, you've got... It, there's so many things happening and you're, you're micromanaging, you know, everybody. And, and I watched you and you were so generous. I just want to thank you, but I just kind of want to know where you, where you got that from. Well, first of all, um, camera blocking is a bit like geometry and that I always thought geometry was fun, but the key to everything. And I, I didn't, I never thought geometry was fun. <laughs> just so everybody knows. Okay, I had no SAT scores. But the, the key to all of it, and I think I told you this when you were studying, as I said, look, when you read the script, see a picture. You've got to see what the picture is, yeah. which includes who's coming in what door, where they move, where they sit. Try to move people. Don't have everybody static all the time because people's yeah. eye watching the show, they not only hear the last, but they want to see things moving because it keeps you interested. It keeps you interested 
psychologically it keeps you interested as far as comedy is concerned. So yeah. do that as well, but see that picture. So what I would do is I would sit down and see the picture, but I would see it kind of in, with four sets of eyes because mm -hmm. I knew what all four cameras would be doing. So then it was easy to get it, get the show on its feet. You know, you do your blocking. When you guys came in to do blocking with me, I was already putting you in the camera right. positions. Yeah. You want to make, you want to bring stuff to the script. You want to make it funnier if you can. I love physical comedy, and you right. guys were great at that. So, I, I mean, you, you were actors that could take those notes, which were great. But I wanted to make it interesting, and then as far as shooting it, always think from the first day, look, I'm blocking this show, and I'm doing it for cameras, because I want the cameras to be a really nice mix of things. And what I mean by that is this camera's got a two-shot, this camera has a single, the center camera's got a three-shot, this camera has a tight two, then this becomes a a walking shot. I didn't do a lot of resetting because mm -hmm. I wanted the audience to roll with us all the right, time. Right. So you do this thing called line cues. So you're line cueing one camera while the other three are on the air. And then when they that camera takes over, another one can be line cue. So that avoids having to do a lot of resets and stopping right, stuff. Right, right. But you saw that. I mean, I gave you that script. And by the way, you you probably knew that when you directed, everybody was very impressed. Everybody really thought you were a good director. So. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. And didn't you do? Didn't you do the Nutcracker thing or something? I did. The Nutcracker was my first. That's show. not an easy show. It wasn't. None of my shows were easy. And Jeff would just shake his head and go, um, "You're doing this special effect show and blah blah blah." I, I would always end up in my lap. He's like, "I'm sorry," and I'm like, "No, no, no. I want to learn how to do that." So yeah. I would always have. You know, green screen stuff for a big audience. I had to choreograph the Nutcracker and physical comedy, but I loved it. No, no, sure. And you I took it on. It. You took it on because you wanted, you liked the challenge. Yeah, yeah I loved yeah, yeah. it. I loved it. And, I, and, you know, I got to, I have a right and a left brain, you know, because I love aviation and computers and technology and stuff. But I also, you know, I love that, you know, other side of my brain, the right side, which is creative, you know, so it kind of melds the technical aspect of of my brain with the creative side and it's somewhere in the middle, you know, something works. Well, the know? lucky thing for me was that uh, Miller Boyette allowed me to work for their company, spending so much time in post, yeah. that I knew when I got into the editing room what we needed. And sometimes if directors didn't get their coverage, you go, ah, why, did I, why didn't this person get that? So yeah. I wasn't gonna go on stage and make the same mistakes. Uh, and I had to be prepared. I wanted to be a director that on Tuesday afternoon could tell you what we were doing Friday morning. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to be that guy. Yeah. And to talk to all the, uh, you know, the heads of the departments and all that stuff, really hands on. Yeah, because you, you were always a step ahead. You were always a few steps ahead. So that, that's one of the things when I watched you that I really learned. I was like, Rich gets it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I just wanted to thank you because you were really, I mean, you were just, you're such a pro and I, and I respect you so much. And uh, for you to take that time, with me and just you'd come over and you'd just say hey uh this is probably you're, you're gonna want to catch that in a master yeah yeah um, yeah well that's okay you're okay. my bud you know and, besides, because, yeah. and you knew i knew you could do it come on um we've had so many people on this show we had karen miller already we had john stamos uh we had uh, jeff franklin which is is i mean it's like you know patty's coming on um you know, Mark Sandrowski is going to come on. Oh, great. I've, I've known Cinder since we were eight years yeah, old. Oh, yeah, I know. You guys you know, are like friends forever. Uh, we really we really got to work with an all-star lineup when you think about it. Sure. We worked with all-stars. You know, you think of great baseball, football, basketball, hockey teams, you know, and you think of those eras where you just go, wow, what a what an amazing time to work with that particular group of people, you know? But the cool thing is, Dave, think of it, they, that we had this great time on Full House, and it was a family of people. And a lot of the same family came back for Fuller House, and yeah. the same thing happened. We still had a great time. We had a great time. It was like a, no time had passed. Yeah. And we ended up on stage 24 I at know. Warner Brothers, which is how freaky is that? I know. That's where we shot the original show. Yeah. And I walked into 24 when they were building our Full House set, and I broke down and started crying because it was like they always say you can never go home again. I walked on, and I saw the set, and I just thought, Wow. And I just, tears. And it was it was. Remember crazy. what they used to do with the audience, too? Because so many people that came to see Full House, especially in the earlier seasons, came because they loved Full House so much. Yeah. Remember they used to do the, they used to raise the curtain real slowly and play that very dramatic music so that everybody could recognize the old sets. And that got a huge 
the applause. Set, the set, the got, set got huge. Yeah, applause. like people saw the couch and freaked out. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it was yeah. crazy. But I yeah, think that's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's why we wanted to have that chair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, look, you I'm know, in the same chair. It's the, the power of chair. television. Yes, it is. Yeah. I could, I could talk to you forever because you're such an interesting guy, and and just uh, like I said, I respect you so much. I and, appreciate uh, that. Man. And you've been a blast to work with all these years. And I, I'm, thank you for doing our show. But uh, we get to do one more thing. You're not getting away so easy. We get to do one more fun thing. Okay. You got it. Because it's time for Aw, Cut It Out. Aww. Cut it out. Of course, every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene. And we have cut out a scene from episode nine that you and I are going to read together. So you got your script. You'll be reading the role of Danny. Okay, okay so here we, here we go. And right. action. When is it going to stop hurting, man? I keep thinking the pain's going to go away, but it doesn't. I see pictures, I think of her. I, I get this feeling, this... this. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that feeling, Jesse. And I don't think it ever completely goes away. Sometimes it's easier, but on days like this, it's really hard. But you don't have to go through this alone. I'm missing her, man. This is... It's so hard for me to talk about it. Well, talking about it, that's what helps me. Talking about your memories, that's what keeps her in your heart. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows the story of how he got my hair all chopped up and everything, but I'll bet you don't know how I retaliated. Look at this. You ever see your wife with red, white, and blue hair? <laughs> hey, I think she looks cute. How did you do this? All right, picture this. It, it was the middle of the night, and two things of finger paints and vanilla pudding. I was a wicked little five-year-old, wasn't I? You know what? I'm glad you're here, Jesse. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Carell has not lost it as an actor. <laughs> author, author. Wow. Rich, thank you so much, man. It was a blast. Dave, it's a here. pleasure. You're a really good guy. You've been great to my family. I've had fun with you over the years. I'm telling you this thing I said when we started. Bobby laying across podiums laughing at you and Bob Saget. Oh my God, it's such a great memory. And we get to carry those laughs forever. We sure do. But thanks again for being just who you are. Thank you. Thanks, Rich Carell. What a blast having Rich Carell here for episode nine. I mean, he's just uh, so much history there. Full House videos seem to be everywhere you look on the internet. And we like to bring them to you on Full House Rewind. So here, take a look at this one. No, I am not a juggler or a mime, just so you know. If you got a Full House video you'd like to send us, we'd love to hear from you. Send us the link to your video at fullhouserewind at podco.us. Oh, somebody's at the door. Hey, Dave. Hey, look, it's my buddy, Mr. Woodchuck. Dave, Rich Carell was on Leave It to Beaver. Yes, he was. Do you know what beavers love? What do beavers love? Other beavers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say wood. Nope, not this time. Get it? Not. Gotcha, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Got me again. You know what? All of us here at Full House Rewind think you're number one. And that's why we close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug. So here it is, your full house hug. Come on, bring it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Rich Carell, for stopping by. And thank you for listening and watching. You are the heart and soul of Full House Rewind. Now go out there, share the love. So long. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. To watch clips from the pod, go check out the Full House Rewind Clips YouTube channel at the link in the description. And we'll see you next week.